it's not my dead self who's gonna care about it. It's me today. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm a midlife post-career Gen Xer who's always looking for ways to make life more interesting and meaningful. Now, even if you're not in your 50s, if you're younger than that, stick around anyway, because I think a lot of these things are pretty timeless. And if you're already doing some of these things, as you get older, I think it's worth doubling down on some of them. The first thing to start caring more about as you get older is spending time alone. And I know for a lot of you that sounds really sad, but statistically, we just spend more time alone as we get older for various reasons. Your kids are out of the house, maybe you're retired and you're not working with people all day long, and eventually we start losing people, our spouses, our siblings, our friends, and we spend more and more and more time alone. And if you're not already comfortable with spending time alone, this can be really scary. It can lead to severe depression sometimes, and it can make our later years feel really sad. It forces us to seek out relationships with people that we might not even really like so much, but it's better than being alone. And so I think it would be a really great idea to start caring about feeling good about spending time alone. Now, some people are just never going to be completely comfortable with that, and that's okay. You don't have to be completely comfortable with it, but getting just a little bit more comfortable with it, enjoying your own company just a little bit more, and feeling okay being alone sometimes is going to get more and more important. For some people, it comes naturally to do things like going out to dinner by yourself or going to the movies by yourself or even just hanging out at home by yourself. But for those of you who aren't comfortable with it, who don't think that sounds like a whole lot of fun, think about this. Try doing it before you have to do it. Practice, 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 however you want to think about it. Start with small chunks, start in certain situations, whether it's dining alone or shopping alone or eating alone. But the more you try it little by little by little, the less uncomfortable you'll get. And then when you're forced by circumstance to be more alone, it won't feel quite so scary or sad or lonely. The second thing to start caring more about now, this is gonna seem like I'm totally switching gears here, but the second thing is cultivating friendships and relationships. If you start now really cultivating the relationships and friendships that you have, it will help save you a little bit from that number one item that might seem a little bit scary. But you have to really prioritize this. Friendships and, and good long-lasting relationships don't always just happen very naturally. We have to put time into it. You know, they say, you know, what you put into it is what you get out of it. And this is so true with community and connections and relationships. And I'm talking about the kinds of friendships and relationships that are either acquaintances or people that you just hang out with and are very casual all the way to the most very important relationships in your life. Paying attention to them now and really, really making sure that, that they are where you want them to be, that you have the relationships that you want is even more important as we get older. And whether you have those relationships currently and can just really work on those, or you might find, gosh, it, as I look at it, I don't really have as many good friendships as I would really like. It can seem a little scary or difficult to make new friends as you get into your 50s and beyond. We make friends very easily when we're younger. We have school and classes, we have work relationships, and you know, you've worked at several places throughout your career, and so you've made all of these, all of these friendships and connections. But as you start sort of pulling back and you're and you're let's say you're retired or your kids are out of the house, so you're not 
participating in all of their sports and school activities and seeing a lot of the your parent peers there you get can feel more and more isolated and so it takes more effort to make new friends as you're in your 50s and 60s and 70s and beyond and one of the best ways i think to do that is to pay attention to the hobbies that you have or the interests that you have and join groups join um you know, clubs or committees or nonprofits to be a volunteer or whatever it is that you're interested in. And remember that the people that you're connected with in those activities, you already have something in common with them. So why not make the effort to try to strike up new friendships and new relationships with those people as you run into folks that, um, that you jive with, um, and you'll already have something built in that you can do together. It won't feel as forced. And I'm curious if any of you have made new relationships, new friendships in your 50s, let's say, and beyond, how did you do that? Where, what activities were you doing? How did you um, meet people? Put, the com- put your, your experience in the comments below because I think we can all learn from each other and get ideas on how we can make new friends. Another way to look at it is to think about the people that you, let's say that you've worked with in the past, that you remember fondly, that you really enjoyed spending time with and maybe you've lost touch with. Go back to your LinkedIn connections, go back to your Facebook connections, um, you know, or scroll through your contacts on your phone to see whose phone number you have that you might be able to send them a quick text message. And, you know, just reach out. These, you know, recultivating these prior relationships is a great way because there's, there's a little bit of a known entity there, right? Reach out and say, Hey, I was thinking about you the other day and really remembering how much fun we had together or remembering the time that we spent together working at ABC company. And I remember that time very fondly and just reach out, whether it's an email or it's through one of your social platforms or it's a text message and just say, Hey, you know what? I was thinking about you the other day and really remembering how much fun we had together or how much I enjoyed spending time with you. And I was wondering how you were doing. I'd love to catch up. Can we connect sometime? Something like that, right? And and really just make a little bit of an effort to just reconnect with those people. What's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is they just completely ghost you and don't respond. Okay, move on. Um, but what if they say, hey, I, th- I was thinking about you too, or hey, yeah, that would be great. I would love to get together. Let's go have coffee or let's get on a Zoom call. Or maybe it's just, you know, you start a, a little text string. I have connected with some people recently and have gotten together, some people that I haven't seen for years and years and years and gotten together for coffee or had a phone call or a Zoom call. And, and even just the one-off connection is really lovely. But you can also say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to do this. I'd like to keep up this, you know, this connection. Maybe we can do this again in a couple months or in a month. Um, and, and see what happens. Again, what's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is they say no when you just move on. But think about that. Think about the people in your past who have brought you joy or who you just found really interesting to talk to or that or that you just wish you could really connect with again. Revive some of those relationships. And if you've done this, also leave me a comment below. Tell, tell me your story. The third thing to start doing more of as you get into your 50s is to start elevating the small things in your life. We often lean on some of the bigger aspects of life as a way to measure our happiness. And I really think that as time goes on, more and more and more, it's the small things in life that really bring us joy. 
And it's those very same things that during the times of the most stress and distress in your life, that being able to find joy in the small things can help really regulate the difficult times. Here's what I mean by that. If you're going through a particularly particularly tough time, whether it's work related or um, you know family related or money related, you can really get caught up in the stress of all of these big things. But if you really have cultivated your ability to glance at a flower and let it make you smile, or to look up at the night sky and see all the stars and think, wow, that is absolutely beautiful, and take that all in. Doing little things like that can really get you through some of the tough times. And the older we get, again, as you're spending time, more and more time alone, finding joy in these smaller things in life can really make a difference. And I'll give you some examples that for me personally, hearing the birds sing, watching the birds at my feeder, absolutely puts a smile on my face every single time. The taste of a favorite food or drink and and really sort of appreciating it in the moment. Music, new music, old music that you remember from your childhood or from your teenagehood that brings you joy and just dancing to that or just moving to it a little bit. The way that the air smells just after it's rained, just these tiny little details of life can really have a huge impact on you. As as we get older, our worlds start getting smaller and smaller and smaller, typically. And if you already know how to see the beauty and the joy in these tiniest of little things in your life, it's really going to pay off. And doing these things on purpose, not just waiting for them to show up in your life, drink the good bottle of wine, use your good plates, light a candle, add a little um, plant to your bedside, anything that brings you little bits of joy, put more of that in your life. I have another video where I spent an evening to myself and did some of this purposeful romanticizing of my life, and I'll link it here in case you're interested. There really are whole schools of thought around how the little things in life really bring you the most joy. Do those things. The fourth thing to start paying more attention to and and to start caring about more as you get older is travel. Now, I know you're going to think, oh, right, travel is for people who have all kinds of money to go all kinds of fancy places, but hold on, hear me out. I mean those that kind of travel too. But Don't put off travel. As you get older, moving around the world, around, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles just gets more and more difficult. And before you're not able to do that anymore, take advantage of your mobility, get out there and do the travel. Don't put it off. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, you know what I really regret? I really regret taking all those trips. (laughs) I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. And even if it's just the small trips, staying in your own town, but adopting a traveling mindset. When you move around and watch things and see things and experience things as if it were from the first time, pretend that you're a a tourist in your own town. Take a place that you see on a regular basis and look at it a little bit differently. Plan your day or a weekend or a week and approach it as if you were a traveler. You know, what what are the best restaurants in town? Um, you know, what is there a musical or a, a, some sort of play in town that you can take in? What are the big sites that people tend to see and, and come to experience when they come to your area? 
do those things from a travel perspective. Take photos, do all the things you would do if you were traveling to a new city and just experience that a little bit differently. Watch how people are, are living in, and working in those areas and, and what can you learn from that? What haven't you noticed before? And especially when you are traveling in different places, whether it's a different city or state or country, I think it's really amazing to watch how people there do things differently. I love the similarities as well. It, it's confirmation that we are all just human beings and want and need the same things out of life, but we do things differently. You know, how do they approach a meal? Uh, one of the best things that I've learned from traveling throughout Europe is how to slow down with a meal and, and the beauty of the two and three hour dinner. Like some of the best experiences I've had have been lingering over a great meal and just taking it in. And take things like that, whatever it is that you find that you enjoy or that you notice they do differently and, and you can see the benefit of, of Bring that back into your life. Take the nuggets of, of things that people do differently that you see when you travel and somehow fold them into your life as you can. That's the beauty of travel, for me anyway. That's what I just, I love to experience. So don't put off the travel, do it now. Whether it's, you know, a spectacular trip to Greece or uh, Machu Picchu or, Thailand or wherever it is, whether it's a spectacular trip or a small trip, you know, an hour or two hours away to a really cool place to visit. Experience that. Don't put those off. Do it now. The fifth thing to start caring more about as you get older is kind of an obvious one. It's your health. And by your health, I don't just mean stop eating all the bad food, start eating all the good food and go to the gym. That's not, th those are good things, <laughs> but that's not the only way to approach it. Have your annual checkups, have your screenings as, as your doctor suggests. Pay attention to how your body feels. If something doesn't feel right, get it checked out, please. Doing that, listening to my body saying, gosh, something doesn't feel right, literally saved my life. I caught cancer in my body long before I otherwise would have because there wasn't a screening for this particular kind of cancer, but something didn't feel right. And I went to the doctor, we caught it, it was stage one, I got it taken care of, and that was almost five years ago now. If I hadn't done that, I might not be here today, or it could have been just a very completely different story. Pay attention to your health. And, and another sort of, it seems like a small thing, but it really is bigger and bigger and bigger as you get older. It's paying attention to mobility and stability and flexibility, all the illities. Um, doing things like yoga. There's a reason why yoga is so good for you because it builds strength, it builds um, balance, it gives you fle more flexibility. And as we age, we need those things to keep us from falling. And once we've fallen on the ground to help us be able to get back up. I can't even tell you how many people I know who are my age and even younger and definitely older who can't get up and down off of the ground very easily at all. It's really a struggle. I make it a point to do that every single day. And again, because if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So things like that, stretching, reaching, um, balance is so important. All of those things, those are part of your health and well-being. It seems silly, especially if you're a pretty active, pretty fit person, even in your fifties and sixties and seventies, but you really do want to start paying more and more attention and really caring about that kind of thing and being purposeful about it as you get older. And the last thing, that I want to talk about as something that you might want to care more about as you get older is your legacy. Now I know some people are going to think about, hear this and say, 
oh, you know, I'm going to, what do I care about my legacy? I'm going to be gone. Like once I'm gone, who cares? Or, or it sounds really morbid to talk about your legacy and what is it going to, you know, how are people going to remember me after I'm gone? It just, that's like, who wants to think about that? It's really morbid. But I think about it as a way of being really intentional and you know will I care about it once I'm dead and gone am I going to care about how the people that um, the people you know the family and loved ones in my life I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be around so why should I care it's not my dead self who's gonna care about it it's me today I today care about my loved ones in the future and how they're going to feel when they think about me or once I'm gone, how they're going to remember me. I do care about how I make them feel and, and where the rubber really meets the road there then is what am I doing today to build the legacy that I want to lead, leave when I'm gone and it can help you in decision making and how you handle situations or you know whether you make an extra effort to do something or not do something um you know how is it going is is this thing that i'm contemplating does it align with the legacy that i want to lead and this seems really esoteric as i'm as i'm saying the words out loud but think about it in more concrete terms like what is, you know, what are the words that you want people to use when they're delivering your eulogy? A really um, common exercise in this is to sit down and write the eulogy that you would want delivered about yourself. Again, I know a lot of you are going, oh my God, that's so morbid. Why would I do that? Because it's a really great exercise to really think about the life that you're living and and the memories that you're going to be leaving behind for people and and is this how you want them to remember you and and I hope that you go through this exercise and you think yeah actually you know I, I I'd, if I died today I think people would feel about me the way I want them to feel about me that's awesome but you kind of don't know until you really think about it and here's a uh, an example of that my grandfather I called him Poppy he made me feel like I could do no wrong. I was the perfect person. There is nobody in the world who thought that I was as perfect as my grandfather did. And I didn't realize really how that made me feel and what that did to my psyche until after he was gone. And once he was gone, I realized, oh crap. Now, now my imperfection is, is obvious because he's gone and he was the one who just thought I was, I don't know, the cat's meow or whatever you want to say. And the impact that it had on me was that I just, he made me feel so confident. He made me feel so able, so worthy, so valuable. And when I, and when I get to times in my life where I'm really struggling with self-confidence or just being unsure about things or afraid of things. He actually comes to me in my dreams and reminds me who I am. And in some way, shape or form in that dream, he says, of course you can do this. Of course you can do it. You are amazing. You just get out there and just do it. Just do this thing. Um, and, and, it, and I wake up just feeling so refreshed and reminded of my abilities and my value. That's the kind of legacy I want to leave, leave in for my children, for my grandchildren, for anybody in my life that I love. I want people to experience me that way or in a similar way. I want them to remember their time with me as a positive thing. I want them to feel comforted by my memory. I want them to feel like I added something to their life. And so as I go about my life, that's the, that's the end goal, so to speak. Now, this, this list is a long one relatively there's a lot of things in there and you can't possibly go through all of them and start trying to tackle them all at once 
But if there's one or maybe two that particularly resonated with you, take that one or two things and start thinking about what concrete actions you can take to to work on that one thing, let's say, and and work on that for a while. And then when you feel like you've gotten that under your belt, maybe then pick another one and start working on that one. Or maybe this list has made you think about several other things that you would include in this list that I haven't. Fantastic. Do those things. Whatever it is that brings you closer and closer to living a life of happiness and joy and purpose, do those things. And if you try some of these things and you realize this isn't actually doing anything for me, this isn't serving me in any way, stop doing it. Don't do it. Life is too short to waste it on things that don't make it better. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do the things. Thanks.